Yeah, let's get to uh, Philippe Garnham. He joins us from uh, Squared Financial, uh, where he is the chairman. This is a, a fintech brokerage. Philippe, welcome to the program. Uh, can I just ask you about how you view markets right now? We obviously had a fairly torrid session yesterday, much of it the result of the numbers delivered by Meta. We've also seen a significant outflow uh, from uh, cash accounts and from uh, large cap ETFs in the United States over the last week or two. What do you think that now tells us about the risk on opportunity? Look, first of all, uh, it's a tough time for investors. Huh? They've been uh, buying uh, the lows, saying that selling the highs. But again, I don't see any panic, but we're just in a in a restructuring, re-evaluation. We have the Fed from our side. We have the geopolitical uh, from the other side. We have uh, new products coming on board. People are realizing the success of new digital tools and digital markets and new asset classes coming on board. So we see some pullback, new opportunities for investors. But again, it is a tough time where volatility is going to be expected largely and strongly. Uh, but I don't see any panic around that. Well, it's interesting that you talk about that because I know that one of the things that you're very excited about is digital asset trading on your platform. Um, but if you look at uh, crypto volume at the moment, it, it does appear to have fallen very sharply, I guess, as uh, investors in those assets have become very nervous about big declines in headline prices. I, I agree. I agree on that. But you have to realize that digital assets are new. They're not really still people are trading other products from currency, bullion, uh, uh, stocks are still the major successful. But it is coming on board. We can see the value of the blockchain technology. It's going to appear in different fields, could be in pharmaceutical, it could be on the metaverse. That is really something that is evaluating. I was hearing that you were con concerned and thinking, how do they make money out of that? There are many ways because it is another asset class. It is another world where commercials will be put in place into this parallel world. It, has, it needs maturity to develop, of course, but we can see the fight from the COPA side, this lawsuit that is going on where Facebook and others are really fighting to uh, protect, to remove those patterns and to push the crypto technology, the Bitcoin technology and the blockchain technology to be an open source. And this will open other opportunities of different kind of products. We have seen NFTs, Bitcoin and other kind of crypto coming on board. And it's a, it's a new economy that is gradually coming on board. But again, other main products are still uh, very successful still trading. Philippe, it's Karen jumping in. As we talk about all the excitement around the crypto world, it feels like that has now passed to the, the technology stocks in 2022. I mean, we've seen some wild swings intraday after hours and over the course of a week. And this is something that I wonder whether retail investors are participating in. We know that they've been very active over the course of this year. And what sort of opportunity and what sort of behaviors are we seeing from the retail investors around these big tech stocks as they're moving? On the retail side, they have a lot of information. They started to have more information. They have accessibility to data, to charts, to their own opinion. And they, there is a, a community that is growing from the retail side. But again, leverage, volatility, those are two, two dangerous elements for them. High leverage, uh, low margins, and strong volatility. Because of, because of the turmoil that we are seeing, uh, uh, the geopolitical turmoil, anything can happen during the day. And this is where you might have swings on gold, on oil, on the stocks that could be very painful for the retail if they're not very cautious on their leverage. But again, it's opportunities, volatility. Can I ask you about uh, these particular names and how they're being traded? Because what we've had a very complex uh, set of numbers crossing from a lot of these big companies about what traditional earnings are look like, in, look, looking like at this point, whether it's just some pandemic noise that's coming in and out, inflationary pressures, or whether there's a fundamental problem for the long term around some of the names from Meta in particular. How difficult is that for the retail trader to ascertain? In inflation, you've mentioned inflation. Inflation, inflation in my opinion, is going to stay. And retail are trying to beat that 7% inflation 
uh, to be able to make money on. But again, it is all about the volatility is going to come from those stocks and those asset classes that uh, we are talking about. But the retail has to be well informed to be able to take the right positions. But they're very active. We're, we've never seen so many ticks uh, at Square Financial. We've never seen so many trades coming on board. We've never seen so many customers uh, uh, wanting to be involved in the market. But again, the, the duty of any institution is to be able to push as much as we can information on the reality, reality of those numbers, allow them to be able to be very well informed, but they want to be active in all asset classes. You got uh, sorry. I should have put a health warning on when you started speaking. You seem like a lovely chap, but but you, but like when, when we had at the turn of the century dot com, which should have been the biggest caveat for any investor out there. Then we had dot cloud, and a lot of them are doing pretty well out of it. Now it's dot meta as well. It's a cheap trick from companies saying, "Oh yeah, we want investors because we've got a meta route to market as well." And you yourself just said, if it's open source, that's going to cut down a vast amount uh, of the um, intellectual property, a lot of the profitability route as well. Well, we've got to be very careful here. No one doubts that the internet has changed our life and has been fantastic. No one doubts that cloud is amazing, that 5G could eventually be fantastic. But we've got to discern from the concept to the reality for the route to profitability. And Philip, I feel there's going to be a lot of cheap tricks on the way where people say, we're well exposed to the meta, but show me the money, sir. Look, digitalization has been pushed in our life so fast for the past two, re two years because of COVID. We've got just pushed all this information and all this way to deal with business. I'm now, I used to be on your studio, I'm now here talking to you out of this camera. Again, the metaverse is a concept that is a parallel life, parallel economy. But again, I, I suggest that investors have to be very prudent. Get to know what it is, take your time to understand but it is different than the dot-com environment we, because it, the dot-com was one element. Today, you have the digitalization, the online business, the online trading, the push of volatility through uh, uh, all digital assets. And again, you have so much information. If that much information is not pushed out and warnings towards those investors, at yeah. the end is their choice. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, I love technology. I, I genuinely adopt as much as I can. I love it. But you just said to me something at the start of this call. You said, look at me now. I used to be in the studio with you, and I, I love a chat across the desk, but I don't mind the chat now. But how much money is the company that has set up that amazing technology that shows me your fantastic face in vision there? How much is it? I don't know if it's Zoom or Skype or Meet Teams or whatever it is as well. But we're doing it for free, Philip. We're having this brilliant video chat now for nothing. It costs nothing for CNBC or for Squared Financial to do that. It's the profitability from this wonderful technology. That's what I want to see, sir. And then again, the valuations of those companies are huge. And this is where some people are looking at that. The valuation of those companies, you have valuation of tech companies that are just enormous and they don't make any penny. But they bring know-how, they bring studies. You have some, some uh, uh, innovative uh, things that will come out of the blockchain technology through laboratories that will help our health. Is that, am I spe spe specializing to the metaverse? I'm, I'm not. But again, what I can tell you, the strengths of the blockchain technology, and if it goes open source, will allow, will allow a different kind of push towards uh, areas we have not been there yet. Philippe, thank you so much for joining us. Good to see you. Philippe Garnham, the chairman of Squared Financial.